Corsair's new Vengeance RGB Pro Series DDR4 memory gives you blazing fast speed and dynamic multi-zone RGB lighting with 10 ultra-bright LEDs per module. Customization options are practically endless with the Corsair IQ software package and they're available with black or white heat spreaders. Find out more about the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro Series via the sponsor link in the description. Excellent! So for about two years now, since 2016 or so, PC gamers have suffered when it comes to GPU choices. After a disappointing launch from Radeon Vega last year, and then astronomical prices during the crypto GPU mining bubble, the NVIDIA 10 series seemed to stagnate after late 2017, which left us with only the stopgap 1070 Ti launch and then the $3,000 Volta-based Titan V, which was out of most people's price range. 2018 wasn't that much better, but in mid-summer, things actually started to improve. The inflated prices began to come back down as crypto mining became less viable. And then finally, last week, NVIDIA launched the 20 series with Turing and RTX and holy shit, they really want $1,200 for the 2080 Ti? Okay, so it perhaps was not the best or most well-received launch, and the prices are absolutely really high for this new series of graphics cards, but let's try to think about this rationally because that is what this video is all about. Now that NVIDIA has at last launched a new gaming GPU series with a new architecture for the first time since the 10 series debuted with the GTX 1080 on May 27th, 2016, what do, what do we do now? We've passed the launch, that point in time that so many people were waiting for so that they could, what? This question is multifaceted, much like the complex beef going on between tech YouTubers on Twitter right now but I will simplify the answer by splitting it into four points. And by the way, I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you are at least somewhat interested in buying a graphics card or gaming PC, and that you're going high-end with a GPU budget in the $400 to $700 price range. So first, consider the benchmarks. We now know that the RTX 2080 Ti is about 25 to 40% faster than the GTX 1080 Ti, especially if you're looking at higher resolutions like 4K or 1440. Here I'll direct you to the hardware unbox review where Steve tested 30 different games and found that on average at 4K, 30% improvement was his result. And then if you're talking the RTX 2080, you're looking at about the same performance, 2080 to 1080 Ti, depending on the game that you're playing, of course, uh, but, if you include pricing, the price factor definitely favors the GTX series over the RTX series. So first off, for you rich folks out there, if you want the best of the best and you've got the money to pay for it, there is no question that the 2080 Ti is the way to go if you can find them. Now, secondary thing I wanna do in this video is actually reality check prices and availability to see if you can buy any of these promised cards right now. The 2080 Ti launch date was pushed back one week for when they're actually shipping, but I believe that means they're actually supposed to ship out today. Currently, the cheapest one is $1,170, which is a bit more expensive than the $1,000 starting price that NVIDIA promised us. Beyond that, they're all $1,200 and up. So it's a simple answer for you guys who want the best graphics card possible. If you want to be able to gloat over your friends with their 1080 Ti's by saying, look, I have a 2080 Ti, and spending $1,200 on a single GPU isn't a big deal for you, this is obviously what you should get. But for everyone else who's a little bit more reasonable and isn't spending 1200 bucks on a single GPU, then the 2080 is what you should be scrutinizing. Now 2080s are available and they're shipping right now. On PC Part Picker, if we sort by price, the cheapest one is $789 and that is reflected over on Newegg as well if we're looking at ju just 2080s and actually available for sale. You can add these to cart and buy them right now. So I guess that is a positive. But again, $790 versus the promised introductory level price which was supposed to be $699 but if we compare that to the 1080 Ti you can currently find that for $650 at the cheapest and there's a decent number available between $650 and $700. The cheapest one is the Gigabyte one here and I'm also trying to reality check these just to make sure they over, they're available for sale and yes for $650 right now at Amazon you can go ahead and buy this Gigabyte 1080 Ti OC with 11 gigs of VRAM by the way versus the 8 gigs that you get with the 2080 however it is GDDR5 X versus GDDR6, so it's a little bit slower, but point being with the 1080 Ti and the 2080, you get about the same performance. With the 1080 Ti, you do get that three more gigs of VRAM. With the 2080, you get the potential future performance of RTX features, ray tracing and DLSS, which in the future, could be cool, but that provides me a great segue to the second point I wanted to make, which is that RTX is still off. The glorious new features of the RTX 20 series, we still cannot viably quantify the value of these new RTX features. There is still no word on the performance or the in-game impact of the new Turing upgrades, the 
RT cores integrated into the 20 series for ray tracing, the Tensor cores that can handle AI stuff and deep learning and uh, should pre be able to do DLSS, which seems like a cool feature if we could only test it. Windows updates are coming for ray tracing, but not until October. Now it's most likely that we'll see these features soonest in the titles that Nvidia teased during their launch presentation. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, and maybe Battlefield 5. We're told it's gonna be patched into both games. Battlefield 5's release date has already been pushed back though to November 20th. And for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're not 100% sure when that patch will be launched, but probably after the Windows patch goes into effect. 3D Mark is also working on a ray tracing test. So this will be a synthetic, but 3D Mark is generally a good means of testing performance between GPUs. This is slated to launch along with Microsoft's Redstone 5 update, which will be the next major, major update to Windows 10. So we're expecting that in October. So if you've considered prices and you've considered features, maybe you should consider not getting an NVIDIA graphics card as all. Vega, is it available? Is it priced reasonably now? Maybe, it's definitely better than it was before. Jumping back to PC Part Picker, we can see a very inexpensive Vega 56 for $379. Although this is from Newegg Business and they've already changed the price. It's back up to the same price as Newegg.com. So never mind that. It looks like the cheapest Vega 56 that's in stock and available for sale is about $405. This is Sapphire Pulse version here. So that's a pretty good price considering what these have sold for, you know, three, four months ago. As for Vega 64, the cheapest one here is this Gigabyte model for $470, which does appear to still be available and in stock, that's right. That's a $30 mail-in rebate card for that. Also, remember for the Vegas, you're currently getting a game pack bundle with three games in it, so that may or may not be valuable for you depending on if you like the games that are being offered. But if you are seriously considering Vega, I think the most valid reason to do so would be pairing a Vega 56 and Vega 64 with a FreeSync monitor. FreeSync, G-Sync, variable refresh rate is still one of the best reasons to jump into PC gaming if you're comparing it to something like console gaming high refresh rate, and the way to get into this with a good monitor that's showing demonstrable value and features that are upgrades over 1080, 60 gaming that you get with consoles is gonna be something like a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 monitor. And if you can get a high refresh rate one, this one's 144 hertz. And if you can get one that has FreeSync and you can pair it with a Vega graphics card, you're looking at a pretty good situation. This is an Acer model that's $350 that supports all those features. It's currently available on Amazon. And if you're looking at the cost of your Vega 56 and Vega 64 plus a monitor in this range, you're looking at probably one to $200 savings compared to getting say a GTX 1070 or 1080 and a G-Sync monitor with similar specs. And my fourth and final point I wanna make is that the price to performance crown is still gonna to go to the GTX 1070 and 1080 with the current pricing and availability that's out there. If you just want a graphics card, if you want to get into high-end PC gaming, if you've been waiting to see what launches are gonna happen, the GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 are still, right now, the best bang for your buck. There are many deals on these cards. You can get the 1070 now for sub $400. Look at that, that's lower than the original promised launch price back in 2016. That's amazing, this has almost never happened. Quite a few different versions available. These are available for sale. You can add to cart, check out, and buy them now. Further down the list, we even have GTX 1080s selling for as little as $430. Reality checking again, yes, that's actually the price. $20 mail-in rebate card, but you can buy it right now for that much money. Uh, keep an eye on 1070 Ti's in this range too. There's a $400 1070 Ti, which might be a good choice. Greg from Science Studio also posted a video recently talking about the amazing deals you can find on the secondary or used market, which I'm not gonna dive into here because it can vary by location, but that's also something you might consider checking out. Bear in mind, you're dealing with the used market, so uh, you're not gonna get a warranty and stuff. There are caveats there, but the point is, I think I would definitely prefer a GTX 1070 or 1080 and a high refresh rate G-Sync monitor for about the same price as what you could buy an RTX 2080 for right now. If you're looking for the best bang for the buck option and you don't want to wait any longer since you've probably already waited a decent number of time for this 20 series of GPUs to launch. There's a couple more questions that might come to your mind though. For example, a lot of people have asked me if they should buy now or wait another month or two for November in the Black Friday time period. I would say buy now if you find a deal that you like. There is a chance that prices could go down before Black Friday, but they could also go up. In the US, for example, we're still waiting to see if the tariffs that have been announced by our government are going to apply towards things like gaming graphics cards. According to this John Petty Research article, they will. 
and the 10% tariff goes into effect today. So we'll have to keep an eye and see if that affects prices. The only people who I might suggest should wait until say November-ish timeframe is if you're shopping for an entire system, not just a graphics card. In that case, uh, it might be worth your while to wait for the Intel 9000 series CPUs, which are expected to launch in the next month or two. Still don't know the exact launch date for that, but it would be worth it to see the performance of those CPUs as well as how that might affect the pricing of this current stuff that's available on the market. But guys, that is my advice for now. For anyone who saw the 2000 series launch and all the benchmark graphs and everything, but was looking for what does all this mean? That's uh, what I've been trying to give you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up button if you did. And if anyone has any questions, please leave them for me in the comments section down below. And I will be following up in another week and a half or so with my October builds. So I'll come back at this and take a look at pricing and availability then as well. So stay tuned for that too. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.